Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ask Service Monster show, where you've got questions for your service business, and we've got your answers. Today's question comes from Chris. Thanks for the softball, Chris. Book recommendations. Obviously, you guys know I don't physically read the books, but I am listening to more audiobooks lately, especially with the introduction of my Vistage group and the constant just bombardment of book titles that they throw out there. Now, this has become a popular topic as of late. I'm seeing it on the bulletin boards on a regular basis, and I think Strategies for Success had it on as of last week. So, what I've decided to do is combine with this question directly from Chris and a few that I've seen around the bulletin boards, I have taken a little time to compile a list of 10 business books that service providers can benefit from. There was four key metrics the books had to get through in order to make it on the list. The first of which had, it had to be audio format, uh, especially for myself. And I'm certainly not going to tell you something that's only available in uh, paperback or hardbound. Number two, they had to be on a bestseller list. As much as I love our industry influencers, the fact that a couple of them have a handful of books, you know, I haven't really read them, so I can't make recommendations for those, but I can make recommendations on books that have stood the test of time and that are on the Harvard Business School reading list. Rule number three, one book per author. Many of these authors are prolific and they have multiple books, but what I'd like you to do is just give you a taste of one of the main books for businesses and service providers that's being suggested. And then if you like their flavor, you can go find out more of what they're actually providing you. And number four, it has to be recommended by multiple sources within the service industry. I really want this list to be the best of the best for service providers. Now, none of these books are specific to service providers, but they are definitely in the wheelhouse of how we can use this material to make our businesses better. I put this list together in chronological order, the newest books being first, followed by the oldest books at the end of the list. But this should be the top 10 books for your service business in order to lead you to meaningful execution. Number one, The Pumpkin Plan, published in 2012. Mike Michalowicz, also the author of Profit First 2017, does a nice job kind of identifying what he did in his business to propel it to a multi-million dollar organization. He was a little bit stuck, came up with this idea of how pumpkin farmers actually process their stuff, used that as an analogy to enact change in his business, and after he successfully did it, documented it within this book. Number two, The Thank You Economy by Gary Vaynerchuk, published in 2012. Now, obviously you guys know I'm a big fan of Gary, and the most often suggested book is gonna be Jab, Jab, Right Hook. But in this case, I really like Thank You Economy best. It did a really good job for me grounding my communication skills to talk to my fellow board members to get them on board for the social media activity we've been doing for the last year and a half. Because before we had any data on it, they were really kind of sketched out about the fact that I was gonna be some weird CEO celebrity. But it's effective, and it's because of that book. Go read it. Number three. Start With Why, published in 2009 by Simon Sinek. I've referenced Simon before. He's an amazing speaker and author, and this book, along with his others, focuses on leadership, especially in big companies, taking case studies in both military, public, and private companies, and what those leaders did in actually order to change the culture and put everyone behind it. The cliff notes are, start with why. Number four. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, published in 2004 by Stephen Covey. Now, this is a really interesting book. He studies a ton of different successful people and what are the common traits and habits that they go through and how you can apply those in your own life. Number five, Good to Great, published in 2001. Jim Collins and his team did a pretty extensive five-year research plan where they picked 11 different Fortune 500 companies who literally went from good to great, which is a tough transition. If you're good, that's obviously sometimes a breaker to becoming great. It's often that great companies that don't start out great start as sucky and then get to great. They skip over the whole good thing. Good is kind of complacency. So he studies 11 companies and 11 counterparts who 
went from good to good. And then seven additional companies who uh, went from good and then fell back down and then did extensive research trying to find subjective data to lay out a roadmap on how exactly those companies did it. Number six, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, published 2001, written by Robert Koyoski. So he takes a look at money management. Now, Dave Ramsey's got some chops here too, but I decided to go with this book because it, it's a little more structured, it's a little more well-known, and I've seen it more referred than uh, Ramsey's book on entree leadership or his money management. This book does a good job of kind of outlining the fact that you don't have to make a ton of money to end up wealthy. What you really need is some discipline, some money management tips, and you know, more discipline. Number seven, How to Win Friends and Influence People, written by Dale Carnegie. Published in 1998, this is one of the most sold books of all time, let alone the business category. And he does a really good job outlining some of the traits that you can use to make people like you or convince them of your point of view. It's a very powerful book. Lots of people recommended it. And Dale Carnegie's got a whole library. You pretty much can't go wrong with that author. Number eight, The E-Myth, published in 1995. Michael Gerber does an excellent job of laying out a case why most small businesses fail and what you can do to fix it. It's actually the tagline, something there. And anyways, it's a good book. Lots of people are considering it life-changing because it really does focus on the small business. Number nine, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, published in 1937. Now, Napoleon studied over 500 successful business owners to uncover the secret of what makes them tick differently. He studied people like Ford, Rockefeller, Edison, and three US presidents. He had access to these amazing people at a time when very few did, and he spent a lot of time documenting what his observations were with that group and transferring that information to the common folk. And number 10, if you've been following me for any time, it's usually the only book I recommend because so few people recommend it. The Art of War, 5000 BC, published by Sun Tzu. Now, published by Sun Tzu, that's a belief. A lot of people think that it's accredited uh, of a large body of work by a handful of people. The idea here, though, is that it was a book written for Chinese generals in the time when there was a lot of chaos going around on the Chinese front. So this book was first a book of war, a book of leadership. But Harvard Business School ended up adopting it like in the mid-19th century, and it has been a beloved business book ever since. But one of these don't look like the other. The Art of War is not a read it and researched and well thought out and, you know, page by page by page type of a book. It is a paragraph at a time, and you consume it, and you really look for the deeper meaning and how they were trying to present leadership and uh, strategy within the book itself. There's a million different translations, so you're gonna have to pick a flavor that sings to you. Most of them are pretty similar, but man, I just find this to be a super valuable book and use it as a basis for a lot of my kind of prompts for deeper thinking. That's it, guys. Top 10 list of business books for service providers. Now, whether or not you're a reader or a listener, I would suggest that at times, you focus on you. But I would caution you here too. Don't go too deep. I see plenty of people who all they do is read and never execute. They have a giant library behind them and not much of a business. So be careful, but don't keep yourself in a vacuum. Look for sources of information that inspire you and continue to learn and grow. Hey, if you guys have any book suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. We love getting that kind of data and seeing stuff we might not have heard before. So thank you so much for your attention. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, go check out the demo, and give us a call.